Hello and welcome to this special current affairs program, an exclusive interview with the UN resident coordinator here in Zimbabwe, Ambassador His Excellency Bishop Arajuli, as he's just winding up his diplomatic stint here in Zimbabwe. I arrived on the 14th of September 2014, and it's been really a fantastic experience. Uh, wonderful people, wonderful country, um, and a lot of engagement across. Uh, unfortunately, we came across a number of droughts, flood, cyclone, that has kept us even overly busy, but, uh, but uh, satisfying uh, overall, uh, working and, and rewarding uh, and, and living in Zimbabwe. Thank you. And through the UN strategic engagements with the Zimbabwe, through the ZUNDAF, the Zimbabwe United Development Assistance Framework, you superintended that. Well, you know, we, uh, United Nations overall, we focus on development. And, and, and the, the structure under which we work is identify what are the key priority in the country and what are the development challenges, what are the universal values uh, we want to uh, support Zimbabwe to, 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 to take forward. And in the context of that, this framework of cooperation, uh, UNDAF, uh, this is the document, which was uh, uh, developed together with the Office of the President and all across ministries. Uh, it's a five-year program uh, uh, which identified key priorities, uh, human rights, uh, democratic governance, etc. And uh, I'm so glad to uh, say that uh, each last five years with uh, strong and uh, excellent cooperation with the development partner and also with the government, we have been able to re uh, deliver over $400 million program each year. And, and also, uh, a lot of work was done across all these um, sectors or priority areas. Uh, additionally, in the last five years I've been here, three years have been hit by drought, cyclone, and flood, unfortunately. So we have jumped in to respond uh, to that crisis. And at the moment, we are uh, middle of a major uh, um, uh, um, drought uh, uh, and, and, and working on that uh, as well. And then, of course, uh, a few months back, we had a terrible cyclone uh, with a lot of, lot of uh, humanitarian need and have been very much engaged in meeting immediate humanitarian need and responding to the relief uh, recovery uh, and, and, and uh, supporting people to stand on their own. Almost 5.5 million people exposed to are being food insecure in the country and as the UN family have come on board to ensure that the humanitarian appeal is accelerated? Well, uh, we launched a humanitarian uh, appeal and I want to share this with you um, on the 6th of, uh, 6th of August. Uh, in fact, I was in New York just um, uh, last week together with the uh, Honorable Minister July Moyo uh, we briefed the member states uh, in terms of uh, what's happening on the humanitarian side. The current estimate is up to 2.2 million people might need help in urban areas. So therefore, the overall need of people uh, for humanitarian support could reach to uh, nearly 7 million. Now, our uh, appeal, current appeal, is for $331 uh, million to cover the um, about 3.7 million priority uh, identified uh, population and to complement the government efforts, uh, what the government is uh, planning to do. And, and therefore, uh, given this situation and complexity, um, uh, it's, uh, it, is, it is really uh, uh, crucial, uh, crucial that uh, we have this response plan and intervention. And I'm also glad to report a number of donors have come forward uh, with huge support, like United States of America has confirmed support of 45 million. Uh, United Kingdom has confirmed support of nearly $60 million. And then um, European Union has confirmed about $11 million. China has announced uh, recovery support for uh, cyclone affected areas, about 58 million, plus uh, uh, rebuilding, rehabilitation of boreholes. 
And then also the World Bank and African Development Bank have joined in in the recovery efforts for the cyclone affected area with nearly $100 million. So there is a huge generosity from international community, but uh, given the magnitude of the problem and, and, and also the various challenges country is facing, uh, our appeal to the international community is uh, join in, please, uh, to help Zimbabwe while Zimbabwe prepares itself to stand on its own, uh, engages with the international communities and reforms its economy uh, and, and, and uh, thus going ahead uh, can stand and will stand on its own. And apparently Zimbabwe is now, since the new dispensation came into, into effect, is, is integrating with the global economy or community of nations now again and the UN is instrumental in that regard. Well, you know, UN, we are always supportive uh, on, the, on the positive efforts and, and the steps taken uh, by government uh, to stand on its own and to embrace the whole sustainable development goal, which is the most crucial part of the development agenda uh, agreed by the United Nations with 193 member states. And indeed, um, for any country to progress, aid alone will never help. What is needed is, uh, is investment, private investment, diaspora investment, and also mobilizing internal resources, uh, mineral, human resources, land, agricultural productivity, tourism, etc. And I must say, Zimbabwe is very much blessed with these uh, endowment of natural resources and human capital. Uh, so the vision uh, Zimbabwe has gated 230 agenda reaching to middle income country is, is ambitious but it's doable and 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 uh, and the only way forward to achieve that is engaging with uh, uh, the global communities and and open for business uh, and and following right rule of law uh, and, and and practices so you know people feel secured uh, in terms of their investment and there's some of the effort government has done in terms of changing um, policies uh, uh, are the right steps uh, going forward. So I very much uh, uh, like and we appreciate as a UN system this initiative uh, and, and, and it does bring a sustainable solution to development through these efforts. Uh, and obviously in, in your stint, the five year stint, we have witnessed successive national policy blueprints talking about economic and sustainable development for the country. And now Zimbabwe has got the transitional stabilization program. What's your take on this program now that the president is saying we should walk the talk in terms of its implementation? I, I'm, I'm absolutely um, commending that step from His Excellency of uh, the point you raised, walk the talk. Uh, so every every ministries and uh, you know department must follow that mantra of walk the talk. Uh, uh, TSP is uh, is 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 a is a, is a, is a very good uh, uh, program uh, because it broadly embraces embraces uh, the sustainable development goal agenda, uh, and also it brings about various uh, political reform. Uh, and, and reform towards economy and, and, uh, and, and reform uh, towards, uh, you know, uh, taking the country uh, towards a path of development and, and progress. I uh, understand TSP is a transitional period. There will be a successive five-year development program, uh, which is the right thing to do because then you have a learning uh, opportunity going forward. Uh, in the context of also all the TSP, there is a plan and proposal and way forward in terms of engaging with the IMF, uh, uh, World Bank and African Development Bank, the overall international financial institution. That's really crucial because Zimbabwe needs uh, investors and investors uh, such as these institution plus uh, private sector and, and Zimbabwean diaspora uh, can really help uh, drive the um, uh, economy engine of Zimbabwe to take it forward. Uh, yes, there was this issue of Jim Asset uh, before as a part of the uh, you know, development agenda, uh, but I think uh, compared to Jim Asset, TSP uh, broadens uh, how and what in more detail 
uh, the, the, the gym asset had, uh, uh, had, a, had, a, had a vision. In fact, uh, the, the UN Development Framework, uh, we embraced that vision because it was the practical thing to do. Um, and, and, uh, um, uh, but there was not much investment put on. As a result, it could not achieve the goal uh, because the engagement with the interested communities and attracting investor wasn't there. And I think the TSP gives that uh, new opportunities and impetus and, and, and in the right, right step forward. Uh, and uh, we, as the United Nations system, uh, are, are uh, absolutely committed uh, in terms of engaging and working with the government. That is the, that is the way forward, uh, how we work. Uh, we are a partner. Uh, and, and of course, what is really also crucial is for government to uh, create, going forward, a uh, much more enabling environment for investment. And the steps such as uh, ease of doing business, uh, the steps such as uh, you know eliminating or, or reducing corruption uh, is are, are extremely essential uh, because corruption breeds uh, inefficiency and, and takes away uh, money from people and development agenda. This is a special, exclusive interview with the UN Resident Coordinator, Ambassador Bishop Parajuli. Ambassador, talking about issues of corruption is a drawback to uh, reaching the aspirations of TSP. Do you think Zimbabwe is now taking the bull by its horns in terms of addressing this evil in the house? I think Zimbabwe needs to do it. Zimbabwe needs to do it, and it's in 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 it's uh, it's moving towards that. Uh, you have a fantastic auditor general, which ha who has audited, uh, uh, you know, books among parastatal, books among many many institutions. I think implementing the recommendation from her uh, will 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 set a great path uh, uh, for Zimbabwe in curbing corruption. I hosted a meeting for the uh, uh, you know development partners uh, together with the chairperson of. Uh, Anti-Corruption Commission, uh, uh, Justice uh, Moyo, and I was very impressed with her drive to take the bull by the horn. Uh, so people are watching, and I think I think what will what will build trust is action, and 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 uh, of course people need to also give her time. Uh, these are complex issues. Uh, these are people involved. Uh, their interests are being challenged, uh, so so I think I think it is doable. I mean, there are countries like look at, uh, you know, Singapore, uh, uh, top on on anti-corruption issues. Uh, there are other countries, uh, uh, you know. I think I think for uh, for Zimbabwe to attract investors, uh, and and for Zimbabwe's diaspora to invest into back into the country. Um, so two elements are really fundamental for me uh, uh, and that can really take Zimbabwe forward. One is rule of law uh, and, and, and this uh, second is a corruption. But also there is also other aspects of course Zimbabwe needs to uh, drive forward is you know protecting human rights, uh, and its own own drive to give space uh, uh, for for the opposition within the part of the constitution, uh, and 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 dialogue and etc. So so engaging everyone, uh, embracing everyone, uh, and and setting setting that good path. Uh, uh, I I see an enormous future. In fact, uh, uh, I was already hoping within the last five years I would see this. Uh, but of course, in the context of nations, uh, uh, timeline and individual timeline, you know, five years is nothing, correct? True. But what I'm really happy is the steps being taken. And now that there is this alignment of the different laws to the to the constitution, 
How critical is that? Well, you know, we are partners. We are there to support, and 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 uh, and alignment law is important because constitution uh, is the supreme uh, uh, supreme uh, supreme law of the country, and aligning various law uh, towards that is fundamental, and and to make it, uh, you know. Um, uh, uh, completely aligned is 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 crucial. UN system. We have been working with number of uh, independent commissions. In fact, uh, mm, uh, I have been personally engaged quite heavily uh, 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 in in the past in supporting the election commission uh, on this biometric uh, system, capacity building, and etc. Uh, but there are a few other things probably. Uh, which various observer missions uh, have recommended, uh, you know, to take and adopt, uh, uh, and and understand that uh, there is a committee which has been set up uh, to, to 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 take those recommendations forward. Uh, it's important to embrace those, um, but then there are also other commissions such as peace commission. Uh, we have been involved. Uh, we have a special program supporting peace. Uh, uh, commission uh, and there has been a discussion about uh, uh, you know even old wound reopening and healing it uh, with a proper medicine such as uh, that Okura Hondi uh, is is a the good president for the first time in this second republic he has come up open on so that people can debate on the Okura Hondi issue right steps right step forward and I also heard even a speaker of parliament talking about. Uh, you know, putting an apology and 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 finding a real way to 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 to. Uh, how, how critical is that for for your president himself to say, let's open up, let's discuss this? Issue. I think these are wise, uh, wise, uh, uh, wise, uh, wise steps, uh, because you know you need to heal country, correct? Together, you need to bring country together, and you need to heal that all the scars, and and I think these are these are wise um, steps and. Uh, you know, His Excellency the President and many of your uh, politicians uh, uh, see that as an important step. You know, and I would also say what Zimbabwe does m must keep in mind for Zimbabwe. You are not doing it for other, others. Uh, uh, and, and therefore, uh, uh, how it can bring uh, all the citizens together, how it can uh, take the country forward to prosperity and progress uh, and, and regain its uh, past history in terms of food self-sufficiency, uh, that uh, very well-educated human uh, resources, uh, and then, you know, good health system, uh, medicine, and etc. I think these are all essential part of uh, Zimbabwe's uh, regaining its uh, uh, status and, um, and 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 it is a good steps. It is a good steps. And Obviously, in, in your dis, in your discharge of duties here in Zimbabwe, you've witnessed it, sometimes this the, the toxic and the polarized nature of politics in Zimbabwe. How have you managed to navigate your way in? To be honest, my focus is always on Zimbabwean population. I, you know, uh, we as as partner a friend, we don't get into politics. We, 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 our focus is how to help support Zimbabwe and be better. Uh, Zimbabwe to gain democratic values and Zimbabwe uh, to embrace the universal values such as promotion of human rights. Uh, Zimbabwe to, to have a freedom of uh, speech among uh, diversified uh, uh, segment of population. And, and it respects every Zimbabwean. Uh, and and it reflects it respects uh, universal values, so so we work around that and we work with everybody, but we don't take sides. I mean, it's Zimbabwean politician to 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 fight on politics, not us. Uh, and 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 uh, of course, uh, if there are concern which really challenges uh, challenges the universal values and etc. Um, we, we, you know, we, we communicate. We communicate privately, we communicate behind the scene, uh, and, and we exchange and etc. What's your take on the sanctions debacle or debate? Well, I will have two things to say on this. 
One is the sanction is between friendly nations, so Zimbabwe and other countries. So Zimbabwe must talk, as it has already started, uh, to find a common ground and resolve the differences. That's number one. Number two is if there are elements you can you look at, uh, uh, you know, beside that, uh, uh, what are they saying in the context of uh, these differences or restriction uh, put on? It's it's it is it is it is with good intention for uh, uh, making Zimbabwe a better place. Uh, those certain point which was stressed on, uh, but I would say I would say it is Zimbabwe. Who can who who needs to uh, reflect and and have a conversation with friends, uh, and but one point I want to mention is in spite of some of these um, uh, restrictive policy or uh, um, and 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 or sanctions, uh, if you look at the international engagement from these countries and support to Zimbabwe, uh, has been continuing uh, at 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 a very, uh, you know, fairly very high level, uh, and and this cooperation has resulted in um, the huge investment. I used to work in a country, uh, Myanmar, mm. uh, as a resident coordinator about, uh, uh, you know, like uh, ten years back, and um, I tell you, the restriction there was so tough. Even they didn't get even humanitarian aid. Uh, the amount of assistance coming was like three dollar per capita compared to like close to sixty in Zimbabwe. So there is that generosity, but I think I think as His Excellency said uh, at the beginning of his term, uh, he's not going to be uh, you know um, uh, deterred by these restrictions, but take the country forward. Uh, to prosperity with the right policy, right program, right engagement, and a call for dialogue, and 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 make the persistent effort for dialogue and engagement, uh, and 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 changing some of the uh, policy which has really uh, retarded investment uh, into the country. Uh, I think these twin or triple approach, uh, step approach, uh, will be the way to go forward in resolving this. Uh, and obviously, you are as the UN voice here in, in Zimbabwe, uh, you've heard about uh, SADC's position on, on sanctions and even the AU position. What's your take on that? You know, this sanction is not UN sanction, so mm. we are not uh, talking about that. Mm. But uh, uh, so therefore, it is between the member states to sort it out and resolve. And uh, But uh, is it true for... for, for for, for cohesion or for development, would you say it's, it's in the right frame for Zimbabwe? Is it, some would say it's a case for Zimbabwe, not a blessing. Well, certain times, uh, you know, certain types of restrictions uh, can be a challenge for, for development uh, because in terms of investments and other things uh, or aid business, as I was saying in Myanmar, Myanmar had a very tough sanction and they didn't even receive humanitarian aid. But look at in Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe is receiving, uh, you know, various development humanitarian aid. It's not restricting it. Number two is there have been, I understand, several uh, investors visiting, uh, visiting Zimbabwe from some of these countries which have a restricted policy. So the opportunity for engagement, investment is not curtained. But what is really important probably is to bring the right policy framework so so that investor comes in. Uh, indeed, uh, sometime when you uh, have this uh, notion of uh, sanction, it carries a, a negative message. Uh, but one needs to go a little bit deeper to understand uh, really what and 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 etc. And I think I think. Um, rather than moving on this, uh, 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 the, 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 the concern, uh, maybe the best is to talk about it, what the concern are, how to resolve this concern, and how to really forget the past and move the forward uh, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a positive way, in a progressive way, uh, and, and in a normal way. 
you're winding up your duties here in Zimbabwe, you say. Your way to the people of Zimbabwe. I love Zimbabwe. It will, I'm just relocating from Zimbabwe. Uh, but Zimbabwe uh, will be always in my heart. Uh, me and my wife and children spend uh, uh, five years here. Uh, so, so thank you very much. I'm very grateful Wait, for this what opportunity. What is your next port of call? Uh, I'm, I'm being posted in, uh, in India, in New Delhi. So, um, near home? Yes, near home, but you know, it, has, uh, it has its own opportunities and, uh, and there's so much to do and I hope to, uh, I hope to contribute uh, uh, to the Sustainable Development Goal and engaging with the government of Zimbabwe, India and uh, its people. The UN Resident Coordinator, Ambassador His Excellency Bishop Parajuli, taking us through his five years stint here in Zimbabwe, talking about different issues from politics, governance, sustainable development goals, issues of corruption as a drawback to ensure that Zimbabwe drives to become a middle income economy by 2030. Ambassador, thank you for giving us I, an opportunity to talk to you. Thank you very much for <laughs> having me and giving this opportunity. And I want to really thank you. I want to thank Zimbabwean people. I want to thank all friends. It's been great here. and. Keep the positive energy. Zimbabwe will progress and move forward, and it will. And my best wishes to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe will progress, and it will. That is my program. Until next time, goodbye.